Our second scripture reading for this morning comes from Mark chapter 9, verses 30 through 37. Jesus and the disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we acknowledge that we are only human and we only have limited human knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. But you, O oh Lord, have all of the wisdom and understanding. Help us to feel your Holy Spirit present in this place. And may my words be blessed so that your beloved people who hear them hear not the words that I'm saying, but the message that you have for them this morning. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Growing up, I feel like I had a common childhood experience. I assumed that things were very clear cut. There was right and there was wrong. And obviously, adults had all the answers and were always right. I mean, we go to school, we learn what's correct. And we just have to understand it, memorize it, and learn it, right? However, the older I got, the more I began to question this. And I realized that there are multiple viewpoints to just about everything in life. I started to realize that it's not as simple as finding the right answers because there is no such thing. However, I think this is a part of being human. We want the right answers. We want to think there are right answers out there. But I don't believe that we are capable of knowing everything or being perfect. I think it's not for us to know everything or be able to do everything. Only God can know everything and be perfect. We, on the other hand, are simply human. But this can be hard for us to accept. And I think we see the disciples struggling with this and struggling to accept their humanity and their inadequacies, not only in this passage, but in the one that precedes it. The passage before this morning's Mark passage was one where Jesus healed a man's son. However, what is interesting is that before, some of the disciples were with the man and his son, but they were unable to heal the boy. Then Jesus approached with the other disciples and was able to finally heal the boy. And I imagine it was a humbling experience for the disciples. Here they are following Jesus himself, and they are just not able to perform the healing. Jesus criticizes them and calls them unbelieving. And after, the disciples asked Jesus why they were not able to heal the young boy. And Jesus responds that it would have required prayer. And to me, this says that the disciples needed more than just themselves. They needed more than humanity. They needed God. They needed divine assistance. In this morning's passage, we see the disciples arguing about who is best. And again, it seems like they are missing the point. They are thinking one of them should or could be the best among them. It still feels like they think that it's their abilities and their abilities alone which are what is important. They seem to be missing again that we need God. 
we need prayer. We need God's presence with us. More than that, we need to not think so highly of just ourselves. This is seen when Jesus tells them that whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. The disciples missed the point because they felt that they needed to be the best. They thought the importance was on them, when in reality, the importance is on God. And we should not be striving to be the best. Our focus should be on others instead. God's wisdom, understanding, and ability far surpasses our own as humans, and so we should be relying on God, not merely ourselves. God's wisdom being greater than human wisdom is what we see at the beginning of today's Mark passage. Jesus is telling the disciples about his death and also his resurrection that are both to come. We are told they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. I think it could be easy to judge the disciples here. We know the story of Easter. We know that Jesus died and was resurrected. So it can be baffling to us that they don't get it. I mean, how could they not understand? Jesus is telling them exactly what it is that is going to happen. But then I put myself in their position. I think about if I didn't have my Bible, if I hadn't grown up hearing the story over and over again, if I didn't know how it all unfolded, if I lived at the time of Jesus and was among the disciples listening to Jesus, I'm not sure I would have known what to think. I think I understand now because I know what happens, but back then they didn't. I know that Jesus died on the cross and ascended into heaven, but back then only Jesus being divine could fully know and understand this piece of wisdom. Only Jesus had the wisdom to understand because Jesus was not only human like us, but Jesus was also fully divine. As I emphasized in the children's message, our theme for the next three years comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and is part of the verse that says, faith, hope, and love abide. So in the sermon on Rally Day, Pastor Rebecca introduced this. Last week, she talked about faith, which will be our theme for this year. Today, we're talking about hope, which will be our theme for next year. And the following year, we will be talking about love, which is what Ted will be talking about next week. I pondered for a while what scripture passage I should use for the sermon this morning on hope, and I landed on this Mark passage, which was the lectionary passage for this week. I stuck with it and didn't choose another passage because to me it felt very hopeful. Not obviously at first perhaps, but I find a lot of hope in the disciples missing the point at first, thinking they needed to be the best, when really what they were supposed to do was serve others. It's relieving that we don't have to be the best, that we should be outwardly focused on others. I like that it isn't about us or our qualifications. We don't have to have all the wisdom or be perfect. That is reserved for the divine. I also appreciate that the disciples do not understand what Jesus is talking about when he foretells his death and resurrection. Seeing these human disciples not understand makes me feel better about my own not understandings. I don't always have to have the answers because God does. And that is where my hope lies. My hope lies in the divine. My hope lies in the fact that God has wisdom that I don't have and I don't need to have. And my hope lies in the resurrection. My hope is in the fact that Jesus predicted that he would die and then ascend, and that is what happened. My hope is in the fact that it isn't about me or what I do. Jesus performed the ultimate act of love. Jesus died so that we would be forgiven, and it's not about us or anything we do. We are forgiven because Jesus performed the ultimate act of love. Jesus died so that we would be forgiven and live eternally. I have a divine hope. 
a hope that goes beyond myself and beyond my human capabilities. And that's all great. Hope is wonderful. But if you, if I were you, I would be wondering how this can be applied. Hope and comfort in God, having wisdom and being with us is great, but very abstract. Which is all nice and everything, but not necessarily super helpful when we're going about our day-to-day lives outside the sanctuary doors. Where it becomes more tangible to me is in how our next three years themes could be related to one another. When we have faith, when we trust in God, when we believe, we can gain a sense of hope. Hope that is greater than us, hope that is in God, Hope that God knows the plan even when we do not know where we're going. Hope in the knowledge that Jesus died and was resurrected so that we may have forgiveness and receive eternal life. And from that hope and the gratitude for that hope, I believe we can then have love. Love for one another because God loves us so much. And in that we can also fulfill what we are called to in this morning's scripture to not place priority on making ourselves best, but priority on serving others, serving God's beloved people, especially the vulnerable who need our love. So let's go out this week thinking about how we can show the love of God to others and how to be open to God working through us. Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ who lived as a human as well as fully divine and taught us what it means to follow God. Amen.